My name is Shraddha V. Raghavan and I am from Kendriya Vidyalaya IISC. I've had so much fun today at the Raman Awards. The whole program was coordinated very nicely and ever since I came in, I was greeted with juice, coffee and other snack items. I also had a very fun time building and the, uh, the Think Tank people who also helped us and clarified our doubts very nicely. They helped us throughout our whole building process and their explanation was so nice. And my whole experience here has been pleasurable and so memorable that I'll remember it forever. Thank you. So I am from I am Rudansha and I am from Ahmedabad, Gujarat. So Raman Award has been like literally totally blast for me. Like I have I have been able to make many kind of stuff, uh, many kind of projects, and also able to come here. It was really a nice experience. Yes. Uh, so I have made a little rocket, uh, a model rocket, so to uh, explain the Newton's third law of motion. So the Newton's third law of motion is uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So whenever I blow up this balloon and let go of my hand from here, so the balloon, so the air in the balloon actually come out from this point, and it would create thrust. So the molecules of the air are going downwards, but the but the actual model is going upwards. So it will float and do so. So equal and opposite reaction. How are you excited about this? Sorry? How are you excited about this award? I'm like really excited about it. I like I really want to like win and I also like to participate. And it is it, it is really a blast for me over here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vinayak and I'm from Delhi. Uh, and uh, I really like Raman Awards. It was a fun experience. Um, there was I got to meet a lot of new people and uh, see like the project that I made the motor. It was very intriguing and interesting to know about the motor that I made and uh, the mechanics of how those things work. It was all very interesting and nice to know, and it was a lot of fun to be here. And uh, so my project is a uh, smart dustbin. So we have a lot of problem with waste management in our country, and a lot of waste isn't treated nicely. So this is a dustbin that automatically uh, has two sensors. One sensor inside it makes tells the waste and displays it on a website, while another sensor outside opens it automatically whenever it sees somebody nearby. So, like, let me give you a demonstration. So here, as you can see, I'm going to be bringing a piece. It'll open up, I'll put the piece inside, and on the website, it'll display the percentage that's filled it is, which is 2%, and at this point, and uh, automatically it gives an SMS to you whenever it's displayed at 100%. This can be used by the MCD or state government or even the government of India. And it also has a smaller use case for little kids. Whenever they see it, they'll open it and they'll put their trash inside, which gives, inculcates the habit of putting uh, the trash inside dustbins. Now I've made all, two other projects. So uh, let me go in a little. Wait a second. So, yeah. My two other projects are a replacement for plastics. Uh -huh. So one is a bioplastic system okay. and another is a uh, system that uh, is for uh, sort of like a, pla uh, a cutlery that you can eat by yourself. So uh, for this is my bioplastics. Mm. So uh, as you can see here, I'm explaining this project a little. Now here I am mixing azure gelatin and other ingredients in a bowl to make the bioplastics. And uh, I'm heating it using uh, the my stove and gas. And uh, this here, uh, when I fast forward to about two minutes here. Wait a second, give me a sec. When I fast forward it, right over here. Here, as you can see, I've put food coloring in one red one, while one is without food coloring. So let me pour in the food one without food coloring. And then here, I've put them into two bowls that have been set for drying. And so uh, after about three days, we will get the results. So. These are just the drying. Now, after three days, this is the result. So this is the plastic. This is the first one without food coloring. Uh, as you can see, it's very stretchable and looks like real plastic. And uh, it can be used for polythene bags and others. This is the second one without a food coloring. Now, uh, this is also like very fle uh, flexible and can be used as polythene bags in other grocery stores. This is a photo of this. Uh, now moving on to the next one, which is our red food coloring, the one we put in red food coloring. So this is the plastics that we get from the red food coloring. Uh, as you can see, this is the plastic. It's very versatile. It has many use cases. It can also be used as a phone cover case right over here. And uh, yeah, it can be used for phones. And if we make it the thickness a little broader, it can be used for phones also. Now the third project is edible cutlery. 
So uh, as you can uh, see, I here I'm making a spoon uh, using uh, this stuff. And then uh, I've cut out the spoon area right over here. Now I'm going to put this spoon to bake. And uh, after some time, it will come. And uh, we can uh, see this. It'll open up. And uh, these are the spoons that have been made. This can be used in uh, wa hot water, as I'm testing here. Hot water, they can be used also. And uh, also, uh, they can be eaten after use. Like uh, after this, right over here, I'm going to try and eat it. So uh, first, we're going to use it as a normal spoon. And then, right over here, we're going to eat it. See? And it can be digested and eaten by a human person also. So yeah, it can be uh, used as a cutlery, which can be used once for... Uh, like using our spoons and after that instead of single-use plastics we digest them or throw them in the environment that biodegrade by themselves thank you yeah so it is a very beautiful uh, experiment and uh, very beautiful uh, journey to me because it is my second time to Bangalore and uh, my and my father don't know the language here but it is uh, very fun the area is beautiful the climate is beautiful and uh, I can see many learn and uh, view many experiments I am very thankful to be selected as a finalist. It is it itself is a very good uh, thing for me. Even if I don't get the prize, but it is uh, really amazing. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Yashika Das and I am from New Delhi, Amity International School, Saket. And I am like, first of all, I am really glad and I really want to thank RYSI for providing me with this opportunity. It's really a nice experience to be here with all the other students and like to tell them my project and to get to know about their project. So it's really a good exchange of ideas over here. And I am really impressed with the like kind of setup also because we were almost inform informed about all the important points, the timing and everything beforehand. So it, the process was really smooth and the activity provided like the morning activity which we had, it was really enjoyable. Means it was not a boring activity and it was enjoyable at the same time. The people who were the facilitators were really interactive with the students. So overall I really loved the experience and everything. Means the entire process I just really commended. Yeah, so my project is actually about a sound wave ladder. It's like a simply a toy, but this toy can do wonders by actually explaining you two properties of a sound wave. The first property is about how the velocity of the sound increases with the elasticity of the medium. So a more elastic medium is like solids and a less ones are like your gases and liquid. So So yeah. So sound travels actually faster in a solid medium as compared to a gaseous or liquid medium. I leave my grip loose right now. Right now is a less elastic medium like a gas or liquid. I push it. This velocity is slower. Now I tighten my grip. It's the same medium but I, I apply the same force. But right now it's a solid one and if I just push it, the speed of the sound increases. So like this, this is the first concept. The second concept is related to frequency and wavelength. Frequency is simply the number of vibrations per second and wavelength is a technical term to show the distance between two consecutive crests and two consecutive troughs. So this is just the wavelength distance. Now, if I just increase the frequency, the wave, if I just, uh, like, if I just uh, give some frequency, like the uh, wavelength is found to be longer this time. As I keep on increasing this frequency, the wavelength keeps on getting shorter and shorter. So frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional and that's what I'm trying to demonstrate using uh, this simple toy. Thank you. Thank you.